What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Atlas. I uh, hope the new season, I know I don't like us calling that, but I don't know what else to call it, is uh, going well for you. Um, I've seen a lot of confusion over the new trade system. Obviously there's been a lot of different opinions on it, but I've seen a lot of confusion on how it actually works. So I figured I would um, kind of go over that and try and explain a little bit how it works. Um, so there's three things you need before that. The farmhouse, the warehouse, and the market, which does mean you need certain skills if you didn't know. Again, some of you will already know this, but for the benefit of anyone that hasn't seen this before or is new to the game, etc., you need to unlock construction in the survivalism tree, which is the only skill tree open to you when you start. And you want to get the basics, unlock construction and merchantalism. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it over there. Then on the second tab at the top, construction. And then you need to go all the way down to the bottom to advanced automation to unlock the farmhouses, the warehouse, the market. You also get the defense tower there for the sea forts. We'll briefly talk about them later. But yeah, that's what you need before anything else. Then you need to go to your smithy and you need to craft a farmhouse. You can choose which one you want, farm, uh, wood or stone. Wood one is less health than the stone one, basically. It doesn't really matter, but the stone one is also a little bit more pricey. Once you've got a farmhouse, you need a warehouse. So you're going to need to craft that as well. And then once you've got the warehouse to start trading, you're going to need the market. Now, you don't have to get the market straight away. It's up to you. But obviously, you need the um, farmhouse and the warehouse to start gathering resources. The market also costs 100 gold as well as resources to um, keep that in mind. Place your farmhouse down somewhere that will be useful for you. So this is one of ours here. I'll explain why I've got resource box there in a moment. But um, yeah, so this is gathering everything in the little area around it. And it's not a big area, believe it or not. It's only about from here to the farmhouse. So from where I'm standing to the farmhouse in a circumference around it. Um, I would show you the bubble, but my button isn't working that shows what resources are, are what and um, shows areas of things. But yeah, it's basically from here to there in a circumference. So it's collecting like this rock, it's collecting um, these fibre pieces, the trees around here, these couple of trees here. And somewhere, I don't know which rock it is, because like I said, my button's not working, there's a sulphur node. Um, so we're getting sulfur here as well. But you can see there it's slowly pulling the resources into the farmhouse. This top slot is for fuel. The farmhouse and the warehouse both burn fuel and they both have this slot. You can use oil, coal, wood or thatch in that order. Um, oil burns the best and thatch burns the worst. So obviously it burns thatch really quickly and it burns oil really slowly. But the other thing is the farmhouse will outperform the warehouse eventually and the farmhouse will then stop so all i like to do is, is put a resource box down next to it and then just come in check it now and then and throw the heavier stuff like stone or metal into the resource box and that way the uh, farmhouse won't stop farming and the warehouse will continuously collect you won't have problems with the warehouse it's the farmhouse that will stop so yeah nice little trick Yes, it does bring the efficiency down slightly on the farmhouse doing this, but your farmhouse is already outperforming your warehouse, so you can lose a bit of efficiency, don't worry about it. So that's why that's there, and that's what I like to do. That's the farmhouse done, the next thing is the warehouse. So that's the warehouse, it looks pretty cool as well, the farmhouse looks pretty good, I kind of like the market, I wish the market looked a bit more like a market stall or a little shop, or this door was open or something it just looks like a shed with a sign on it to me let's check the warehouse so you can open this up you can see there all the resources it's been gathering you can see there randomly an egg i'll explain that in a moment and you can see there we've got silver even though we mainly collect tin and um, we've been trading tin for silver that will just keep collecting stuff it's got a massive weight capacity on it so you ain't got to worry about that, 250,000 in weight. So the farmhouse has to be in radius of the warehouse and vice versa. Again, I can't show you the radius because my button to show that isn't working for some reason. But it's big, alright? It's big. And be considerate, guys, when you are placing these. If you're on an island, chance are you're going to be in an alliance with someone. So just be considerate. 
you know, especially in PvE, PvP obviously, people are going to troll each other in PvP. It's PvP at the end of the day, that's fine, but at the same time, you don't want to shit on your doorstep, do you? So, be considerate with them, keep them, you know, reasonable. But they have got large ranges, both the farmhouse and the warehouse. And, um, yeah, you won't have issues with that. The only issue you will have is trying to place them um, if people have already got stuff down. Because they'll clash with other people's. And it doesn't just count your warehouse in a radius. It counts other it counts other people's. And you can only have so many warehouses in a radius. You can only have so many farmhouses in a radius. So just be wary of that. So then get your market down. The market connects to the warehouse. Mine is disconnected for some reason. I don't know why it's done that. It, it was fine earlier. Now it's randomly disconnected. Um, so I'm probably going to have to pick that up and redo everything, which is slightly annoying. But yeah, things are going to be going wrong now and then. And yeah, they're going to have to um, change things as they go. But let's take a look at it. I can show you how it works anyway. So when you open this to start with, this will all be empty. On the right hand side, you've got trade offers. Again, like I said, this will all be empty. So at the top, click New Trade. On the left-hand side, it will show you your resources. On the right-hand side, it will show you um, what you want to trade for. So, for example, we will select Tin here. I've been trading one for one just to get some trades going and also to generate a little bit of income. Um, and there's obviously, you know, it's a new market, so there's no real set price at the moment. But I feel like one for one, say Tin for Copper, for example, they're both really common. One for one, someone's getting tin when they ain't got tin. I'm getting copper and I ain't got copper. And we're both generating gold from it. So it's a win-win all the way around. So things like that are pretty standard. So I would advise, this is what I've done, is go through all the resources I own and go one for one on other resources that are common. There are exceptions, like ironwood in the wood, obviously. Ironwood's really rare. So you're going to have to pay a much higher rate to get ironwood. But for example, again, light wood to aged wood or strong wood, one for one is, is fine flat, I would say. And again, you generate gold from doing it, as well as getting additional resources. And if you didn't know, just to be super clear, you need additional resources for higher tier items. So instead of needing like wood thatch and fiber to make something, eventually for the higher tiered stuff, you need like three types of wood or thatch or five types of wood or thatch. Um, so that's why you want to collect as many different types of resources as you can. Um, but yeah, you can set what you want. So if you didn't want that, if you wanted to get more copper for your tin, you could slide it to the right there. So you would pay less tin and get more copper. Or you could slide it lower if you think you've got something worth less than what you're trading for and you want something a little bit rarer so you might pay more of tin for the copper or whatever the resources might be hope that's clear what i mean there but yeah you can see you can slide the trade rate you can also type in a trade rate so if you wanted to put that at 0.50 you could do that once you've got that set how you want it you just click add i'm not going to because i've already got this trade set up and then it will appear in this window so you can see there, tin for one copper, established trade, 1k tin for 1k copper. You can edit that, and you can also delete. But I've had issues deleting it. When I've been deleting stuff, it's not deleting the thing I'm trying to delete. It deletes other things. I'm not even sure what it's deleting, but it does delete stuff, but not what you're trying to delete. And also, this window is occasionally causing crashes, but we won't get bogged down in the problems at the moment. Uh, this is about how it works or how it should work. So yeah, that's your trade window. Like I said, you select when your resource is on the left, whatever that might be, you select another resource on the right. You set the exchange rate you want to pay for them resources. Click add. It'll appear in your lists. And again, I would recommend, I don't know whether, what other people think of this, but for the most part, I would recommend, for example, the wood, thatch, and fiber and metal, trading one for one for the common resources, just so you're getting the extra resources and you're generating gold. On the left-hand side, you've got the logs and the trade routes. Logs at the top, obviously, it's just a log of what's going on. We will look at that lastly, because there's some interesting things there. Um, but at the bottom there you can see the trade routes. These are the ones that I've got pending, accepted. You can see one there that's blockaded, which means I'm playing on PvE, so someone's kind of trolling me for some reason. 
Um, they've blocked my company or maybe they've blocked this grid. Um, but yeah, people, if you own a C4, again, we'll look at the C4s at the end. I'll explain a little bit. But basically, whoever owns a C4 can set a tax rate. They can also decide to block certain companies from trading through that C4. And if that C4 is on the route of one of your trade routes, it will blockade you. Um, so that's what that is. Pending means you've asked for a trade or someone's asked you for a trade. Obviously, it will tell you that that one's accepted there. Look, so we've currently got two trades happening. Um, to set up a trade, remember, we've set our trade offers on the right. This is what we want to trade. When you click here, find new trade route, it will bring up all the different markets that are connected to your market on its route. So any markets that you can reach from your market will appear in this window. Any of these blank ones, so anything that's not showing any images, I believe doesn't have any of the um, trades that you have. So they don't meet the same requirements. The ones with the images means that you do have the same requirements. I'm, I believe that's what that means. Um, so all you would do there, so these guys are trading silver and opal and iron. So they must be trading with the same offers that I've put on here somewhere. So I will click the cogs and then request a trade route. And the game crashed and this will happen a lot guys. I'm really sorry. I'll be right back. <laughs> right, okay, I'm back. It's pitch black obviously. Why wouldn't it be when I'm trying to record a video? All right, let's try this again. So yeah. Once you click the find new trade route, so bring up this window. Anything that shows the images and resources means that the trade matches what you're requesting in your trade offers. So you guys have got the same thing. All you do then is go, yeah, that's what I want. Um, so these guys are trading silver, opal, and iron for whatever we have set over here. So you click the cog, click request trade route, click request, use max allowed taxes, um, I believe that just means it will always go like a quicker route maybe and it will use like the maximum tax if necessary. Uh, I've just been leaving that unchecked. You can also select any uh, different control points. So you can use neutral and alliance, tribes and alliance, tribe only. Um, I've just been leaving that as any but you can do what you want there and then click request. That will put down there pending. Um, and then when they accept, the trade will then start, hopefully, if uh, it's all working properly. The only issue I've, I've found with the market so far is that you can't see what other people are trading. So it's really hard to find like other trades. So like obviously, there's quite a lot here doing the one for one like I've been doing. There are other things here that I've been doing at different rates. I'm trading um, slightly more tin to get iridium because iridium's slightly rarer. Um, I've, trading tin for honey because I really want some honey and I can't bother to go and find it. Um, so you can do things like that and again I've not found anything pop up for them yet. So the only way I can think of doing that would be through Discord, through chat in game and going to different grids and speaking to people, setting up something between yourselves. One of you puts the trade in, or you both put the trade offers in in your trade window so you've got the exact same trade offers in your trade windows. Then you search in the filter of the um, trades so you, when you're on the find new trade route click at the top type filter so say I was trade I'd set up a trade with crimson I type in crimson it would bring up their trade and then I could accept it through that um, other than that you can't just like browse things and see what people are offering for different rates you, it's gonna take a little while for set rates to become a thing I imagine eventually we will we'll find like some sort of common ground on different trade rates for different things. But for now, you're just going to have to chat with people, set up what you think's fair, and see if other people are matching you. Like I said, the one for one thing seems to be a good idea for the most part. Trading common resources, especially one for one, you both get different resources and you generate gold in the process. It's really really helpful, and a lot of people seem to be doing it, so it, it is working like that. Um, so lastly, the logs. The log is obviously a log. It's just telling you what's going on with your trades. The only thing I found with this that's slightly, not annoying, but um, I was hoping it was going to show this in the tribe log or the company log, and it doesn't. It's on its own little thing. Um, so you can't integrate that with each other at the moment. So you can't integrate this to Discord. I'd like to have this on Discord so I can see what's going on. 
Um, just because it's interesting to see what's um, being generated when you're not playing, obviously. And good way of keeping track of stuff. Um, but yeah, if you go through the logs, you will notice, so you can see there that the market was created, I made some requests, the trade was accepted there, um, some shipments started, that one was completed, we received the goods and 10 gold after tax. Then there was a fire on board the ship, so we lost half a shipment and lost the profit, which is one of the random events that can happen. And there's another random event there. The ship was nearly impounded, palms were greased, but it ate into the profit, so we lost some profits. Uh, then we randomly got 50 gold, and I don't know what that was from. Um, so the further a trade is away, the more gold you're meant to generate. But everything I've seen so far, it's either 10 gold or 5 gold. So you can see there, look, 10 gold. If I try and trade with Crimson, who are on the same island as me in the same grid, it's 5 gold. But, like I said, that's generated 50 gold there, so I'm not sure how it's 100% working. But what I do know is, after 2 hours, and I only had two, no, sorry, one trade route set up, we made 135 gold. Now, it's not blindingly quick, and not a lot of money, but... Um, it don't make sense to be only getting 10 gold, does it? So I'm not entirely sure how it's working. It's not very clear. But yeah, you do make more gold than I thought you was going to and more than a lot of people thought, I guess. Still slow. Still feels like the schooner's a long way off. <laughs> and the, yeah, the galleon's like a dream. But um, doing it like this anyway, which is meant to be the new meta for gold making. Hopefully in a little while it will be. Like we've got to get further through and see what happens with it. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the gold. Like I said, we'll have to see how that goes. You can see that it pops up quite a lot. 10 gold generated, 10 gold generated, 10 gold generated. Um, so yeah, maybe it's 10 gold per grid, which would make sense. Um, and then you can also see here, if I can find it, uh, our parrot hook beak laid an egg. And then hook beak died, which is unfortunate. <laughs> need a, uh, they need a new parrot on their ship. Um, so yeah, that's another one of the random events. But yeah, you get it. There's the log. You can see trades being requested, trades accepted, trades starting, trades complete, and all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do now, guys, is go through some of the information that they've put out about these. Just to clarify anything, if you are still not sure. Hopefully I've done a pretty good job of explaining how it works. Um, like I said, there's still a lot of things that could change. There's still a lot of things that will change. And... It's still a little confusing, but um, yeah, I think that's how it's all meant to be working. Like I said, we'll jump over now and look at some of the information they've put out about it and hopefully just clarify a few things. So here's the latest post, guys, about the trade flow. I'm not going to go through this entire post. Now I'm going to do it in another video when I get back from work next week, so it's going to be well far behind when it happened, but I do want to talk about some stuff in it. Maybe I'll change some, some stuff between now and then as well, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, this is the trade flow chart, which was part of the latest post. Um, so you've got build, players build, farms to collect various resources like wood, stone or metal. Then ship, they have a warehouse that all the farms automatically ship resources to. Trade, the warehouse is connected to a market which allows you to ship the resources between islands and trade with other players. Control, access to trading is controlled by a sea fort. Whoever controls the sea forts can give access to trading and in and through a server. Land, trading also generates gold, sea forts can tax this gold, you use gold to buy and maintain ships needed for war to gain land, and then you're back to building. So that's like the process, so you can see what they're trying to do, and it makes sense, it's going to create, um, or they're hoping it's going to create more objectives kind of thing for PvP I'd imagine, like they want you to fight over different things and in the process it's going to generate more trade and yeah, it's going to be a vicious cycle. Uh, so I kind of get it and that does clear things up a little bit, but not quite. So let's go to a previous post Markers will need to be connected to a warehouse which in turn should be connected to a farmhouse Farmhouses are used to fill the warehouses and the market will use this to look things up to trade Markets will need to be placed next to a warehouse and each warehouse may only have one market Players will need to control both land for resources and markets and sea for trade routes. And what they mean by the control of the land is obviously like you're going to have to find different resources around the world and set up your markets and stuff to trade them, like to generate more money and stuff like that and generate more trades. 
Um, because if you can find rare resources, you're going to be, you know, more in demand. You're going to get more trades coming through. So you're going to obviously then make more money from the trade generated. To control the sea forts allows you to blockade other companies. So in PvP, you're going to be able to stop like rival companies trading through your grids and things like that, which could actually stop their trades completely if there's no other route to them. Um, so it's going to mean like fighting over sea forts to basically siege out big companies. In the actual market itself, players will have a menu that will allow them to set up their resources for trade and exchange rate at which they will trade for. So that's referring to the menu on the right where you pick like the resources you want to trade and what you want for them and then set the exchange rate and then you click accept, it makes a trade and then it'll automatically generate it and try and find people with the same requirements. Players can then request trade routes with other markets. Once a trade route with another market has been established, the connected markets will automatically set up the trades as long as both parties have the required resources within their warehouses. So like I said, you set your trade up what you want, like what you're trying to get um, with the you know your desired exchange rate. The market will then automatically try and find other people with that exchange rate for them resources. That will show in the um, trade window on the left when you select look for new trade route. Then you click um, request trade with that company. Then they accept. And when they've accepted, that will generate the trade, which will generate the trade route, which will then generate the gold. And once it arrives, will give you the resources into your warehouse that you guys traded. A log is also available in the market menu to keep track of trade requests, attacks on your shipment, and obviously the random events. That's basically um, what we went through in the game a moment ago. I hope that makes sense, guys. Before we go anywhere, though, I will just mention this about the control points because I think the control points are, are pretty straightforward. There's one to four in each grid. You can raid them even on PvE to break into the bank and take the gold out from the taxes. Even neutral forts generate tax after trades have been thrown. Obviously in PvP you can fight over them and fight for control. Once companies own them, companies can set a tax rate, which can be anywhere from 10%, I believe, up to 50% tax. They can choose to specifically blockade companies if they wish, um, even in PvE. So companies that own a control point can also choose to blockade specific companies from using its control point, making it possible for companies to stop trades between others. Players will also be able to directly attack any shipments en route as well. The trade will only happen if both ships successfully reach their end destinations. You can't attack the shipments right now, it's only virtual, there's no physical ships in the game right now, it is all virtual until they release the physical side of it which we don't know when that'll be. Hopefully it doesn't require another wipe, but yeah, that's not happening yet. So everything at the moment will always make it to its destination, but you might lose some of your load and you might gain some stuff. So you don't know what's gonna happen there with a random event. You have to check your log in the market. But yeah, people can blockade your routes. Bear that in mind. Obviously it's a big advantage for anyone that can hold a control point, uh, but that's how that works. And there's one to four control points in the grid and like I said, you can take control of them. And as long as they're neutral or they're not blockaded, your trades will go through them. And when they go through the sea forts, the sea forts generate tax into a tax bank. And whoever owns a sea fort can take that tax. Or you can attack it and steal the tax. I hope that's cleared things up. I hope that simplifies things a bit. Um, I'm sorry if the video was longer than I wanted it to be. I'm try and keep it as short as I can, but obviously I wanted to be detailed about it. I wanted to show as much as I could and explain as much as I could about what was going on with the trade system. Um, and yeah, and hope it's helpful. If I've missed anything, guys, feel free to mention it down below. If I've got something wrong or, you know, like I said, if I've missed something, make sure you leave a comment. So it's in the comment section because not only will it then, you know, put me right or I'll know I've missed something or might not even known something um, in particular, other people will be able to see it and it'll help them as well. And that's the whole point of this video is to help people understand the trade system and um, yeah, especially any new players, for example, it'll be really helpful any kind of advice or information. Don't forget, if you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. If you want to watch live streams, you'll get notified when I go live. And also, if you'd rather watch on Twitch, follow me on Twitch, watch my gaming on Twitch. I know people hate that crap, but I have to do it. Sorry, guys, I have to do it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.